so I've been lucky to have some incredible coaches in my life, uh, some mentors. Uh, do you believe uh, it was you coaching yourself or having somebody on the outside help you? Uh, what do you recommend? I, I, I think who you, who you get taught from the very beginning has a huge effect on where you go from there. So I had a guy named Doug Furness that you knew. He was a great power lifter. He's a football player. Um, he pro wrestled for years, all that. And you got a shot of him. Throw throw a shot up there. Yeah, that's when he was wrestling. That's when he's small. So um, <laughs> just for the fans that are out there, just to just to know who this guy was at college, Tennessee. Is that right? Yeah, University of Tennessee. He yeah. was their head fullback when they won the national championship. Throw that, throw that shot if you have it. Uh, also, just so you guys know, around the world, he still has the collegiate national uh, record in the squat and in the deadlift to this day. And he set it in 1983. Is that correct? 1983. Yeah, I saw him squat 887 at a beat. That's crazy to think that that and is that's still, when he was still here. playing football. Athlete. Yeah. 36 inch thighs. <laughs> Yeah, he could do a straight all-out splits and put his head on the ground um, when he was at his biggest. Splits. Yeah, 83. Yeah, 83, he set those numbers. An 886 or 861 in college? 826 dead and a 986 squat. That was, that was his best, best, not in college. Yeah, his 985, 985 squat, he did like it was a hot knife through butter. And we're like, well, why didn't you take like 1,025? He goes, I didn't need it. I think I saw him do the uh, the 986 if it was up at the Pac West in uh, Kirkland, Washington. Oh, he did. He did in the, at least in the mid nines or so there. Yeah. Um. So he was a coach to you. Good. Yeah, and 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 also Fred Hatfield. They pretty much told me, kind of taught me the value of uh, programming, and everything else. They actually stepped back and let me learn myself and I, I grew like a weed i just stuck to my numbers i was like you know an add kid that i would sit in the gym and just watch people i learned more from watching than i did from reading i don't know if that was a generation thing um but for me as well that was that was a thing you throw up the picture of jeff ed and all of us in up there in the yeah, the jeff Magruder. Uh, fred you're looking at fred hatfield yeah, yeah there you go so now, that Doug, young... Doug Furness is to my right, then Fred Hatfield on my other side, then Jeff Magruder, and then Doyle Kennedy. Doyle Kennedy's the far right. He was the first man ever to deadlift over 900. And just so you fans at home understand this, Jeff Magruder, who's uh, Fred Hatfield, is in the middle. And to the right there uh, is Jeff Magruder. And that was my coach growing up as a young little kid. And these are the guys I got to be around as as a 11 12 13 14 and started my powerlifting um so that's where kind of our our our, our lives uh you didn't know me then but yeah. I, I knew of you um but that's where our lives kind of cross paths and it and it brings me to that what i like is that i was around the greatest as that young young kid and my thought was, because I was so young, that what they have, what they achieved, was common. I thought, <laughs> right? My ceiling. I just set my ceiling that these guys that you just saw the picture of was feasible for anybody. And so now my world was opened up tremendously um, because of the fact that I believed that whatever these guys were doing and they were teaching me, I should be able to achieve. Yeah, it can be done. So why is it that today's society doesn't look that look at that opportunity or or that coaching and go, okay, I'm going to take everything this man knows, apply it to myself, and be even better then? Why why can't they or at least a percentage of or or try to, you know, it's like they just look at that nowadays. It seems to me, and go, there's there's not as many it. qualified coaches. I don't think there's as many qualified coaches, or I should say there's too many unqualified coaches. And, and social media, everybody wants it here and now. 
they forget that they have to put in work for a long period of time. But that that's where it goes from motivation and passion. I mean, do you, do you think guys that are multimillionaires, their only ambition was to let me see how much money I can make right away? Or did they build a platform to make that money? On top of that, I always say, do you think these millionaires just go make the million and go, okay, I'm good. I got my million. Yeah. They keep going and keep going and keep going. And I think for you and me, it's like the trophies were great. And the tr- that's all that's great. But we're just going to keep going because we love yeah, it. I didn't do it. We, we didn't do it for, I don't do it. Never did it for the trophy. It's, it's my own journey that I made. I enjoy the, the process of learning and growing. And it's not just learning and growing in the gym, but look how, Look how many people we have around the world and how many people we affect with that and how much enjoyment we got out of it. Yeah, I think one of the things There's is like Jeff, Jeff Magruder was the guy on the right side there in the photo. And he, he was the, when I was 13, 14, getting ready for my first powerlifting meet when I was 14. And, and you know, he was there and he, he slapped me, get me pumped up to bench press and stuff. And I'm like, I was like, I loved it. And then we lost him a few years back, but I had a, a great talk with him. And he just is like, I'm so proud of you. And that meant more to me than any universe trophy or anything. It was just like this journey that we had together. It's it's the banter and, and the talking and, and that uh, brotherhood is, yeah, is can, better than the you trophy. You can count on people to be the same person they were at the beginning from when they got successful. Successful. I mean, I met you way, way back when, and then all of a sudden I see you and you're Mr. Everything on all the, on all the, uh, uh, covers of all the magazines, even romance novels and shit and, uh, on TV and stuff. And then I met you and you're just Michael Hearn. I like that better. I think, I think that's where we kind of talk about the passion is, is the fight within ourselves. A hundred percent. I think motivation kind of gets, um, I think it gets a bad rap because they, they, they think it's a good thing to be motivated. Cause I want to, I want to make money. I want to be famous. I want people to know me. And that's kind of motivation in the well, motivated mo- Motivation without passion though, doesn't last. I agree. Cause the first hiccup, the first time you lose, the first time you they fall out, something else. done. Yeah. It's, it's like a kid in a candy store. Yeah. I, just, I want this. No, I want this. No, I want this. Some, I, I posted a picture when I was just sliced up off this last uh, training plan. And he goes, you don't compete. So why do you get that sliced? And I'm like, I never competed. To get, I mean, I always get sliced. It, it, it's me. It's who I am. It's like I never did it just because of the trophy. It, it's, it's amazing how you and I think and how the majority of society thinks. I want to do this because I want to get in shape to get this girl, or I want to look good on the beach, or I want to, it's like everything's outside of them. Very little's inside. Yeah. You know what? Stan Stan Efferding gave me a quote once and he said he didn't remember if he heard it or if he made it up. And he said, there's uh, nothing anybody will be able to do to or for you. That'll be better than what you can do to or for yourself. So it has to be through you. Yeah, we could get help from uh, the guys that mentored us or, you know, that we cared about that, that taught us a lot, but they took the leash off and let us go. Then we do our own path and everybody we help, there comes a time where I hope I taught them enough to where they don't need me anymore. Where they can all of a sudden sit, send me a video and say, look what I did. And I'll be like, "Fuck yeah, this is great." <laughs> that's that's a that's a cool process through life. Uh, yeah, you gotta, you, it's you know, it's not always about me, 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 me. I may you know, I may help somebody, but they do it. So I say, you know, this is you know, they'll say, "Oh, this is all because he, it's not all because of me." I aided you a little bit, but you did it. This is on you. You did it. So it's okay to pat yourself on the back when you do something really good for everybody out there watching. I mean, I think that's the great thing about uh, Ed's teaching and he puts that information out for you guys. Um, 